Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Mono Bluetron, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. So today we're doing a little bit of a retrospective on an archetype I previously tried out, but I didn't feel great about. I've always been a big proponent of volcanics, partially because I live around like the biggest volcanic fanboys in the history of time, and partially because the words instant speed raigeki get me just a little bit sweaty. So while previous iterations of the deck have had all right showings on 10 minute testings, the deck's always been hampered by a very unkind meta. However, with the inclusion of D barrier alongside a meta that actually doesn't float a whole lot, I think the deck might be poised for a comeback. So let's jump into the list and I'll show you what I'm playing. So here's the list. Now, to be honest, it looks pretty self-explanatory, but still for all of you normies in the crowd that have not yet heard of our Lord and Savior Volcanic Rocket, I'll give you a complete rundown of why I'm playing Volcanics, what I expect the deck to do, and the individual card discussion that I hope will answer your pressing question of why are you playing Pot of Duality. So firstly, Volcanic is an archetype that has historically sucked balls. It revolved around use of a card called Blaze Accelerator, which is a continuous spell that allows you to send pyros with 500 attack or less from your hand to the graveyard in order to destroy a monster on the field. With Volcanic Shell, you could destroy like three monsters, and with Volcanic Scattershot, you could Raigeki your opponent. However, because the deck relied on the use of a continuous spell, every MST in the format beat them. More importantly, while the ability to kill a creature of your opponent's for one card in your hand sounds cool, it doesn't really work out in practice. You have to draw the Accelerator, you gotta draw the Volcanic, and even then it only works once or three times if you're using Shell. Rocket helps, but, you know, not by a whole lot. Now this all changed with the release of Blaze Accelerator Reload and Royal Firestorm Guards. Suddenly you could dump a whole bunch of Volcanics for card advantage, and Firestorm Guards meant you could get a whole bunch of scatter shots off in one game. So the deck started putting up results, then it slowly stopped. There wasn't a ban or anything, cards just got really good against Regeki. But if you look at the decks projected to be good this upcoming format, namely Zodiac with a smattering of Invoked, one of the biggest weaknesses to Zodiac is how fucking bad they are to Regeki. Since people expect it to be a tier 0 format, and other competitive decks will be playing tech cards like Dimensional Barrier to stop it, a deck that can Regeki at any time and never really plays with their extra deck seems like a really powerful choice. What I want the deck to be able to do is Regeki every turn. Now, as I'm sure most of you know, that's not good enough versus a lot of strategies, even uh, Zodiac occasionally. So we're playing the Paleozoics to help us with defensive plays as well as streamline the deck. Cards like Canadia and Dimostulus are great about stopping our opponent's plays and solving things we can't just board wipe, and Morella dumping Blaze Accelerator Reload is actually just hilarious. So. On to the individual cards. So first we have our Volcanics. We got three Rocket in order to find the Blaze Accelerators as fast as possible. Three Scattershot, the best card in the deck. If he's sent to the grave by the effect of a Blaze Accelerator, you can send two more from your hand or deck to Raigeki and do 1500 damage to your opponent. Next is three Shell, the second best card in the deck. Perfect fodder for the Accelerator and Dimostulus replaces himself. In a deck where we physically can't play Pot of Desires, we have to do what we can to draw cards. Next we have two copies of Royal Firestorm Guards. This allows us to shuffle three Scattershots in a shell back into our deck, draw two cards, and then add a shell back. Sweet card. Two copies of Max C to do, you know, Max C things. Next we have Spells. They're pretty straightforward. Three Duality. I don't like playing this card, but it's very good turn one in order to find the part of the Volcanics we're missing, and then of course we have one Regeki. Now, it might seem a little weird to be playing Regeki as well as you know, like 15 Raigekis, but the difference is uh, it's a spell card, and that's pretty relevant because we can still activate it under Dark Law, under Crystal Wing. I mean, there are reasons. Next we have Traps. Three copies of Blaze Accelerator Reload during either player's main phase. You can discard a Volcanic to draw a card, and if it's in the grave, you can banish it to send a Volcanic from your deck to the graveyard. If you've got multiples of these, you can banish one to send Shell and start drawing, or usually you're banishing it to send a Scattershot and blow them up. Our Paleo Suite is pretty straightforward as well. We have... Three Oleonades, the MST, three Dimostulus, the Karma Cut, three Canadia, the Book of Moon, three Morella, the Foolish Burial with Belongings, and one Pakaya, which is just awful. It draws you two cards, but more importantly, it bricks you all the time. Morella is specifically good in this deck because it can send an Accelerator and guarantee a Regeki. Next, we've got three Reckless Greed, famously good in both Paleos and Volcanics, three Dimensional Barrier because we're little baby boys, and one Vanities, the only card worth playing. In the extra, we've got a lot of fours I doubt we'll ever really go into, and a lot of twos that we will. Now, keep in mind that the fours have a lot of different creatures that do a lot of damage. One thing about Volcanics is that sometimes they just end up accidentally 
only doing like six or seven thousand points of damage and in that case a utopia or an exes dragon or a cowboy or even a gagaga -ga -ga samurai can just push in that little extra bit of damage and win you the game the twos are anomaly carrots obapina tree toad and a sky cavalry who is doing his best impression possible of castell so with that let's jump into the games so our first matchup is Necroz in 2017. Oh boy, and Jesus. I think the last time Necroz was meta, Volcanics was playable as well. Can someone make a meme of Volcanic Rocket in a coma and the nurse says, you've just woken up from a three-year coma and Volcanic Rocket says, oh boy, I can't wait to lose to Necroz of Trishula again? Uh, you can see he's kind of hurting for playables. He's playing Asriel, God of Hyper Death of the Necroz, and... Gishki Vision? Ah, oh boy. Well, you know, you make do with what you have. We haven't actually opened very good against Necroz. We have a couple copies of the MST Paleozoic, which don't do a lot against it, and of course a rocket, but nothing to send off the Blaze Accelerator that we're about to get. Let's go ahead and do that now, adding a Blaze Accelerator to our hand and then setting three and ending our turn. Uh, in a pinch, we can MST our own Blaze Accelerator to Raigeki. He activates Instant Fusion, and I figure that's the best time for Max C, because he's going to get Norden, and at least we will have to let me draw two cards. He's going to target my Volcanic Rocket, but not a attack, I guess expecting one of these to be a battle trap or a magic cylinder or something ridiculous. Um, we draw a couple of Reckless Greeds, which I immediately want to play, but we're going to pot first, and ooh, a bunch of Paleozoics. I'll pick Canadia because it's defensive, but now I'm in a little bit of a pickle because I want to set all three of these cards. So I'm going to go ahead and Oleonades my Blaze Accelerator Reload right now, just have the availability of a Regeki at any time, and then I have a Canadia, two Reckless Greeds, and an Oleonade set for a really sweet crackback. So on uh, my opponent's turn, he's going to Normal Summon Manju, use it to get Necroz Mirror and then uh, make Trishula. Uh, funny story, I did not know how this was going to end up, but I figured I might as well try to Regeki now, uh, sending a Scattershot to Grave, and after he banishes the Scattershot, I find out, oh, it actually does still work. So we're going to destroy all monsters our opponent controls, uh, blowing up everything, and he's going to take 1500 as a result. Uh, afterwards, he's going to go ahead and um, activate Necroz Mirror to get Necroz Cycle to his hand, and then uh, Special Summon Unicorn, which will immediately get set by Canadia. Uh, I will use use uh, the uh, Oleonades in Graveyard to Special Summon itself, uh, set up for a sweet rank 2 play next turn, and uh, he decides that that is all he wants to do. So our next game is up against Raid Raptors, playing Swallow's Nest, a card that I usually don't see in these decks, but it's actually very interesting. Uh, we've opened okay, we have two copies of Reckless Greed and a Pakaya and an Oleonade, so we'll get to draw a bunch of cards, bin a bunch of Paleozoics, which we can then Special Summon off of the Reckless Greeds, but we, if we like die for some reason on the Crackback, we are just dead. So he's going to go ahead ahead and summon um, Vanishing Lanius. I'm going to Pakaya right now because I figure uh, I want to have these engraved uh, no matter what. So then he's going to activate Vanishing Lanius' effect and I figure it is max C time. Uh, we're going to get at least one for the mim Mimicry Lanius. Try saying that five times fast. And then another one for the inevitable Force Strix. He's going to use Force Strix to add a Tribute Lanius to his hand for next turn. Basically just setting up and not playing into max C as best as possible. And then um, he's going to banish Mimicry Lanius to add a Raid Raptor Readiness. So he's feeling okay. Um, I'm feeling a little bit better. We're going to start by drawing two cards and chaining an Oleonades, and then immediately draw another two cards and chain a Pikaya. So now we have 10,000 cards in our hand and the ability to go into Obapina. We'll do that now. Uh, Obapina will use his effect to add another Paleozoic to our hand, and now I think we can get rid of everything on his side of the board. We'll start with the Oleonades to destroy the Speller Trap. He'll chain the Readiness and we'll chain the Pikaya to the activation of the Readiness. Uh, that means it can't be destroyed by battle. That's fine because we can still banish it with Dimostulus. We'll discard a Shell for Dimostulus so that we can, uh, you know, add another one to our hand, which we'll do now. And now that we have two level two water monsters on our side of the field, it is time to go into Tree Toad. Um, we will set four and end our turn, uh, forgetting to attack because we're not very good at Yu-Gi-Oh. Our opponent is going to normal summon a Tribute Lanius, activate its effect, and I figure that is just enough for me to Tree Toad. He chains a Swallow's Nest, which is kind of kind of cool, um, and gets a Vanishing Lanius as a result. Uh, we do get to negate the effect still, um, and we will return Tree Toad with Tree Toad, but as soon as Vanishing Lanius is out, we're going to set him face down so he can't Special Summon, uh, and uh, also Special Summon an Oleonades, and he figures that's all he wants to play. So our third game is up against Invoked Wind Witch Artifacts. Uh, you thought we were going to get through this whole episode without playing against meta, didn't you? Uh, this deck is poised to be pretty good, I expect. Um, we've opened all right. We have a Blaze Accelerator Reload and a Shell, which is good. We have a Morello, which is good. And, uh, of course, we have the best card in our deck, Vanity's Emptiness. Unfortunately, this game resembles most Vanity's Emptiness games, and you will not see a lot of action. We're going to go ahead and take a Scattershot, uh, just because I figure, eh, you know, uh, allows us to Scattershot 
shot turn one without having to really set up anything in the scenario where he uh, makes some shenanigans occur. He's going to use Thunder Dragon to get Thunder Dragons. This is just setting up the grave for a Merkaba, I assume. Uh, he's going to activate Reckless Magic Circle in order to get an Alistair and then um, summon the Alistair to get an uh, Eidolon summoning magic. So he tries to end his main phase here and I figure, okay, well now's the time I suppose to activate Blaze Accelerator Reload, draw a card. Uh, he does a thousand and then uh, sets a couple of cards and ends his turn. So we um, are going to take 500 to add another shell, immediately discard it. Remember, uh, if it's sent from hand to graveyard, it does not trigger Vanity's Emptiness, and we do get to keep it around. Uh, we're just going to hope that we draw into something. I have a bunch of draw steps to do it. He gets another Alistair and starts beating in for 2,000. That's not really what I want to see, but could be much worse. Um, we'll draw another card, and what do you know? It's Rocket. Rocket should be able to do what we want. He does not Solemn the Rocket, which is sweet, and then we'll start beating him up. So we do 900 there. Um, during his turn, he's going to ooh, basically just change a guy to defense mode and pray for the best. Uh, we now are in vanity's mode where I am attacking every turn and hoping he doesn't do anything. I'm trying to do as little as possible in order to allow him to activate as little as possible in order to prevent any of my cards from dying as much as possible. So at this point I figure his only out is probably a regeki or like a twin twister or something and I don't know how many of them he plays. The deck seems like it has a lot of cards in it and um, because it is playing artifact sanctum uh, I can't imagine that it has a lot of room for like twin twisters or regeki or stuff like that. We get to uh, hand size limit and we're going to discard a blaze accelerator reload. A pretty cheeky little tech there. At this point I can normal summon the uh, royal firestorm guards but I don't really want to because I feel like a solemn strike would be pretty bad for us right now. Um, I'm completely content just beating in every turn. Uh, at some point I expect to be able to activate um, this blaze accelerator reload twice in one turn with the uh, scatter shots um, allowing us to do 3,000 points of damage. So for now 3,000 is the magic number. Uh, I would regeki here but unfortunately I don't have room for it, so I'll just uh, keep drawing and discarding, and finally he draws Regeki, outs my vanities, and activates Adeliodon, summoning magic, banishes one of my shells uh, for, what is this, Pugariarito, and um, one of his own cards for a uh, Rydeen. Uh, I figure now is the best time for me to activate Volcanic Scattershot, uh, blow up his entire board. Seems like he probably should have gone into Merkaba here. Um, he's going to take 1,500 points of damage, which is pretty sweet, and uh, then pass it back to me. So, um... I'm feeling all right. He's at 33. I figure now's the time I want to Royal Firestorm Guards. He's going to Artifact Sanctum for his Scythe, and I go, ah, shit. Well, I guess I can't make a Tree Toad this turn. I'll Regeki and then use Royal Firestorm Guards to get in 1,700 points of damage, but he saw Mornings. I'm like, well, you know, that's actually a little more than 1,700, so I'm feeling all right about it. Um, afterwards, I will Morella for a Morella in order to beat in for 1,200, and we're 100 points off lethal. So I'm feeling all right right now. I figure I have a lot of scenarios in which I win this game. Uh, there are a couple where I don't. Uh, he activates a Deliodon Summoning Magic, uh, then gets it back with the Alistair. Um, he's going to activate it again to get Ponario, and then once he attacks, I will flip Canadia and uh, special summon a Pikaia from my graveyard. So I'm feeling okay right now. I don't know what any of these cards are, and I haven't seen them yet, so I assume they're like uh, artifacts or battle traps or something. Um, I understand the battle traps are basically the only way I lose this game because otherwise I can attack for 200 points of damage over Eilister. So I figure I might as well go into a Tree Toad with a uh, 1200 backup, but then I realize I need the Tree Toad to survive and also I probably need a 1200 guy to survive. So I'll go into four, which I do right now. Um, but in order to do that, I have to blind Oleonades and what do you know, I hit Scythe. So that prevents me from going into Tree Toad and now I'm feeling like, oh, I guess I just have to attack and hope for the best, but thankfully the best does occur, and we win the game. So we're back with the deck. Oh, that last game was a bleeder, and I feel like if he or I had played it just a little bit differently, it could have been over a lot faster. But as far as this deck goes, I really like it. I think the deck isn't nearly optimal yet. I'm excited to see if people play around with it and what they come up with. Uh, I will say it suffers from a lot of the same problems that original Volcanics did, which is if you draw the wrong portions of your deck, you're kind of shit out of luck. I think the two... Uh, different archetypes, Volcanics and Paleozoics, complement each other very nicely instead of sort of playing against each other. Um, the dimension barriers were not great in our games, but we also weren't playing against the meta meta per se, except for that last game. It's certainly good against Zodiac, it's certainly good against Invoked, and really that's all it has to be good against. Nice that it's chainable, we can activate it on our turn and go into ridiculous plays. Um, at the end of the day, games where we got to play the Paleozoic part of the deck felt very good, like playing the best of Paleozoic with the added option of being able to Raigeki. Um, the access to Raigeki really helped out a bunch of matchups that otherwise I think we would have had to grind through, and 
all in all, I'm really pleased with the results. If anything, I would say I was a little disappointed we didn't get to burn anyone out with repeated scatter shots and like maybe one of our rank fours or a cowboy or something. But, you know, you take what you can get. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed watching me try and milk more ad money out of an archetype I've already explored. I hope you enjoyed another episode in the endless quest of what beats Zodiac, and most of all, I hope you just enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give me a like, a comment, or subscribe. It really helps me out. And if you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I am live on Twitch intermittently at the link below. It's twitch.tv slash monobluetron. Finally, if there's a certain deck or archetype you want to see me play on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comment section below, and I will do my best to accommodate you. Otherwise, I'll see you Thursday.